Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dominique Luray. I started this channel as a student studying medical lab science. I vlogged that whole experience and continued making videos through my first year of working in the lab. I'm still in the lab. I just don't really vlog it like that anymore, but I like my responsibilities. I like working in healthcare most days and I like being able to help patients in this capacity. But I just turned 26 years old and I've really been thinking like, am I supposed to do this one job for 40 years? Like, is that, is that my outlook? <laughs> and so I wanted to have a candid chat on medical lab science as a long-term career choice. And keep in mind, this entire video is purely my opinion based on my personal experiences. First, let's talk about choosing careers. I really do believe that we all deserve to work a job that we enjoy. So the biggest questions I had in school were, is this the right job for me? And will I like it long enough to stick with it? Um, I've, I could say that I've had a positive experience on my journey as a lab professional and I still remain excited about the possibilities of the future. I take these random personality and career quizzes just for fun, but recently I took the spark type test. It helps you find what you value out of jobs beside the paycheck. And it has allowed me to identify what gives me that spark or what brings me purpose at work. My spark type is the maven. I'm excited to go to work because I get to learn new things, which is true, especially working in microbiology, because I still have new skills to learn. I see new organisms all the time. There's new nomenclatures. I've gained a few projects at work. We take on new testing as well. So I'm getting a chance to learn new things outside of what I already knew from working as a journalist. And I casually look at job postings, but I've noticed that my main interest is what new things will I get to learn if I pursued this new job instead. So I did like that quiz because it's helping me shape my career progression. So yeah, if you're interested in taking the spark type test, it's free. I've linked it in the description box below. And again, it doesn't tell you what jobs you should have. It's just going to help you figure out your values in the workplace. So if you take it, feel free to share your results in the comments below. So lately, um, I've been wondering if there will be a time where I lose my spark while working in the lab. And I'm not really pressed to leave the laboratory, but if there's other roles that help me keep my spark, I'm curious to see what's out there. So I've been spending time exploring different paths that I can pivot to later. And it's funny because I just had this conversation with someone to do like a informational interview and we got to talking about career progression and what opportunities are available and we talked about my personal interest which are questions that you guys asked me too. So I don't mind talking about it. It's just a lot to type in the comments. So another reason I'm making this video to hopefully sum up those answers to those questions. But generally, the most visible path for lab advancement is management. And as of now, I'm not interested in it. Like no supervisor, no manager. I'm not seeking none of that. And mainly because my perception of management is that it's more so dealing with staffing and budgets and just operational things that would take me away from doing cool science things that brought me into this field. When I think about myself in the future, I see myself doing something technical level or expert level. And I do want to pursue jobs that still relate to microbiology because it's my field of interest and it has always piqued my curiosity. So I personally feel like MLS can be a long-term career, but the caveat for people like me where we do want to have fulfillment with work is going to be finding a niche that you want to stay in, plus finding a place to grow and thrive. And I think I found my niche being microbiology, but now I'm exploring opportunities where I have a chance to thrive. And there's actually a few different roles that I'm interested in right now. And I would like to work at least one of these during the span of my 40 year career. But these roles are within academia, administration, or going industry. And I will say that my goals could change at any point. And I'm just in a place of exploring what's out there right now. But I'm really interested in academia and lecturing classes. If I ever have the opportunity, I really do enjoy working with students as a part of my job. Before I was in MLS, I was teaching at a technical college for three years, but it was just biology labs and dual enrollment classes. So I did gain some teaching experience and I enjoyed it. And it was such a fun job. And even now I get to precept. I love being able to help students on their journey by allowing them to see the classroom knowledge click with the real world experience. And I look forward to the days that I get to work with students. And obviously I know precepting is not the same as lecturing a, a full class. But my idea of lecturing is basically being able to just talk about science and theory as you help students gain knowledge. You get to pass on all the real world experience and stories from <laughs> to the class. Like you get to pass on all the real world experience and stories to the class. Like how cool is that? To prepare the future professionals of healthcare and STEM. 
to be a part of advancing forward laboratory based sciences. Like I do think teaching is something I can enjoy doing further down the line. And I feel like I probably sound so cliche, but it's definitely an idea that I toy with a lot about the possibility of pursuing that as a career, like faculty positions. Um, I could definitely see myself being a professor even. <laughs> but I'm also a person that lives in my head and I do a lot of daydreaming. So I don't know how realistic teaching could be, but um, yeah, that's another thought for another day. The other role was an infection preventionist, which is what I consider administration. I feel like since I've worked in microbiology, I'm performing tons of testing for patients that are potentially suffering from these pathogens. And in some cases, those infections could have been avoided, like hospital acquired infections or something. So an IP, I can help make changes to hopefully prevent or lessen the risk of patients getting these infections. Because sometimes it just feels like all I ever do is give patients bad news. And of course I know that the results I provide are helping them get their diagnosis and treatment. But it would be nice to be on the other side where I implement changes that would bring infection rates down or make sure we're holding higher standards and following best practices. And there's also different areas in the infection prevention field that I was looking into. Um, I would like to do work that relates to data analysis or even emergency preparedness in the hospital. But let me clarify, I'm not interested in being an epidemiologist. I think that the infection preventionist role fits in line with having a clinical microbiology background better. And for me, the epidemiology scope of practice widens way more than my actual interest. So um, infection prevention in the hospital setting would be my ideal role in healthcare if I were to move towards administration, I guess. The other possibility is going industry. The only issue is that I don't live near any of the major companies and I don't want to relocate to where they are. <laughs> but I go back and forth on the idea of being a clinical application specialist, like working for analyzer companies. I can see myself being the person that will visit hospital labs and help set up and validate new analyzers and trained users. And then I'm out of there, like on the way to the next trip and maybe give some educational presentations here and there, you know, to relate to the subject matter. And like, that is my idea of an application specialist. And the only issue is that some of the companies combine this role with the field service engineer. And I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So these are the jobs that I could actually see myself doing one day. I've also looked into research and government type work. So I think I've reached a point that if any opportunity presents itself with a stable Monday through Friday, nine to five work schedule, I might take it. It's never going to hurt to give it a try and see if it's right for me. And then when it's all said and done, eventually I do believe that I'll fall into a place where I can grow and thrive long-term. So there's a few things that I've noticed that these jobs have in common. They all require that I have subject matter expertise. So that means working four years at the bench. <laughs> and they all come with a responsibility to teach others in some way, which I'm okay with. And um, all of these jobs require a master's of science, if not a doctorate. So while I'm gaining experience in micro, I decided that this will be the best time for me to pursue my master's so that when I graduate, I'll be eligible for these roles. But don't think I have this all figured out because I really don't. I'm just the type of person that needs goals. I need to feel like I'm progressing towards something, like I'm working towards something. So for me to find so many different avenues to explore is very exciting right now. And again, these roles that I've been researching have stated that applicants will be required to have a master's of science. So um, I'm choosing to go back to school, mainly for personal fulfillment and potential career growth. And I applied to two programs this summer, um, a master's in microbiology and a master's in data science. Both programs are geared towards working professionals and will both teach skills in programming for Python and R, database management and machine learning and AI. I got accepted into both programs in September, 2023. And I did not make a decision until last week in December. So I decided to choose a master's of science in microbiology at the University of Florida. <laughs> One reason being that I really do enjoy studying microbiology. I want to learn bioinformatics skills, as well as gain more experience with programming and just kind of keep myself up to date with current microbial research. Second reason that I chose microbiology is that it just made more sense to me that if I enjoy the science and I want to continue working in this science, then I should study it so that it builds a path for me to master the subject of microbiology and one day become a subject matter expert like my job aspirations require. The program at UF is 100% online which was perfect for me because I just couldn't up and move. Like, I'm just not in a position to do that. I'm also hoping that going to school online will work better with my current schedule of 12 hour day shifts. <laughs> 
Um, the cool thing is that this program will allow me to gain research experience even as a distance learning student. And that was something that I was worried about going into a distance program um, that I wouldn't be able to come out with research. Their microbiology program is based in computation, so I can do the programming and data analysis projects from home, which is awesome. And you know, making this decision it has me wondering, like, am I making the right choices for my career? And I dwell on that a lot, but in reality, I won't know until I'm ready to apply to those different job opportunities in the future. I feel a little better about the grad school decision because I already had a personal goal to obtain a graduate degree and I need to work full time while I do that. So distance education was my option to do both of those things. And so why not study a science that I truly enjoy and hopefully that will make it easier to finish grad school too. Um, if it's something I like, I shouldn't get you know burnt out and all the other things. <laughs> so yeah, I did take some undergraduate computer science classes this past year because I didn't know what I really wanted to study. These classes were a part of a post -bac program, which allowed me to gain skills in Python, machine learning, and even knowledge with data ethics, data cleaning, data manipulation, data organization, and visualizing data. So way more skills than I expected to learn. But I also earned the Google Data Analytics Certificate too. So with all these skills gained, I noticed that I want to focus on healthcare and life science data and the master's in data science would not allow me to do that. It's going to be applied to a lot of different areas that I just don't have an interest in. So I'm deciding to do the master's in microbiology because of just personal interest. So yeah, I'll be starting grad school next week, which is so exciting. But with the excitement for new opportunities also brings a feeling of uneasiness about the future. The medical lab scientist job itself is fun to me. There's a lot of critical thinking involved that I enjoy, but it's the other factors that affect the job that are actually stressing me out. And it's mostly things that I cannot change because it's beyond my control, but like lack of staffing and ever changing work schedules. And then the overall work cultures can be kind of negative. And sometimes it just feels like my own career experience won't get better unless I leave the clinical environment. And I know the grass is not greener and other careers and stuff. So I try not to, so I try not to let negative things bother me, but it's kind of hard when work is where I spend the majority of my time now. But I feel like some things are just part of the journey. So I don't know if the career paths that I'm considering are even right for me. I don't know if the decisions I want to make are going to be good. I never know if my choices are going to be worth it. I don't have any of this figured out. I really am trying to take things day by day. And I also go back and forth on the idea that I'm young and this is the best time for me to take risk and follow all the aspirations that I want to do. Yeah, I'm just dumping my thoughts at this point. So I don't know how rational I sound right now, but I take my feelings of wanting to eventually move off the bench. Very similar to how some nurses don't want to work bedside the entire 40 years of their career. They branch out and do other things in nursing. And that's essentially what I plan to do. I want to branch out and do other things related to the laboratory. So it's exciting to see myself in all of these different avenues after I get my master's and maybe the master's might open more doors to other things that I haven't considered yet. Back to the premise of this video, my aspirations change by the day as I figure out what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy and there are a lot of options in the field. It's just kind of up to you to carve out your journey in the direction that you want to go. Again, I'm just talking and exploring different career routes at the moment to see which one is right for me. Right now, I am enjoying my time in a microbiology lab. It was my original goal to go into a specialty when I found out about this field back in 2018. It took me four years to do it, but I'm happy that I now have the opportunity to gain the experience that I wanted. The other thing is that I do see a lot of connection with public health, quality and safety areas, as well as how I mentioned earlier, like infection prevention and even um, informatics. So it's just a great feeling to be inspired to keep exploring new goals and challenging myself as I prepare to move forward in this career. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or are at a similar point in your career or have chosen uh, your career, feel free to leave a comment below and let's talk about it. Also subscribe to my channel if you're interested in joining me on my grad school journey as I begin my first semester next week. <laughs> Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.